Hey gang, thanks again for joining me this week. Uh, seems like the year's just flying by, right? Yeah. So, are you struggling with something? You know, in this message, I want to reveal to you something that I just recently, not learned, but just got more clarity on. And it has to do <clears throat> with wrestling. <laughs> no, not like MMA or or uh, what is that, or jujitsu or things like that. It has to do with um, what the things that you are wrestling with <clears throat> in life. Do you find yourself wrestling with your thoughts, your emotions, like anger or hate, you know? Then, my friend, you are wrestling with a spiritual enemy. I know People trying to make spiritual everything. Everything, oh, this is a demon, that's a demon, that's a, there's a devil under this rock. There's, you know, all kind of things like that. But the Bible does tell us that we do wrestle. So do you know anyone who is wrestling with something or has been wrestling with something for a long time and, and you long and they long to be free from that? Well, this message from God is for you and for them or for anyone else you know that is wrestling with something. So let's start with what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10, and I'm going to go through verse 12 in the New Living Translations. Okay, New Living Translation. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all the armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The New King James version of the Bible says this of verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Now listen to what the Amplified Bible says. It's it kind of, the reason why I call it Amplified is because it's, they add a lot more words to it and it's a lot more words. <laughs> okay, starting with verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from Him and be empowered through your union with Him and in the power of His boundless might. Put on the full armor of God, for His precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavenly, or a heavenly, not heavenly, heavily armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending with only with physical components or opponents, uh, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you may be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So let me uh, just attempt to put this in in a little bit more simple or big word, succinct, in a more succinct way. In verse 12, for our wrestling or struggle isn't against people we see. <laughs> Easy to blame people, right? But against angels and demons and uns the unseen world that exists in the spirit and powers that the world is subject to, but not us, because we have a new master, Jesus. Against the devil, 
his demons, his present darkness in this age, we are living against evil purposes and desires in heavenly or spirit or the spiritual realm. You know, therefore, because of this, you know, we need to use God's armor to resist or oppose them, standing firm. And that, that term, standing firm, means to continue safe and sound. Stand unharmed, to stand ready or prepared to be of a steadfast mind or a sober, solid mind, right? One who does not hesitate. And does not waver. You know, here the Apostle Paul is encouraging the church to depend on the only power that can overcome our enemies. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know, you and I, just personally, we don't have any power to overcome the enemy. And if we did, we wouldn't need God. We wouldn't need Jesus' sacrifice. We wouldn't need the Holy Spirit's help. We wouldn't even need the Word of God. But we cannot do it. I know there are people who say they have a deliverance ministry and all of that. If God has called them to that, that's great. But they, they don't do it in their own power. And if they think they are, then they are misled. You know, we need to equip ourselves with God's covering or God's armor, which will protect us in every situation. Just look at what this passage has to say. Be strong. Look, be strong. How? In the Lord. You know, and First Second Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 16 and 17, it says, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. That means they're regarding them according to the Spirit. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, or we saw Jesus while he was here, yet now we know him thus no longer in the flesh. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, you see, we are in Christ. Just like in the Passover, when those people were in the house and the blood was over the doorpost in the book of Exodus and they put the lamb's blood over the doorpost, they were safe because they were in their house covered by the blood. That is a type of us being in Jesus Christ and his blood covers us or protects us from the wicked one. You know, and in, uh, in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He's like, well, but the old things didn't pass away. But in the spirit, you're no longer serving the world and the wickedness of this age. You are serving Jesus, and you're serving God through the sacrifice of Jesus with the Holy Spirit's help. So that is new. That is new to us. The old has passed away. The way that we used to function is old. Now we are physical. We're, or like the Bible says, we're in this world, but not we're of this world. We have been born again spiritually. We are partakers of eternal life already while we're still in the flesh. Now, when this body goes its way, we're going to be in the Spirit with the Lord. Colossians chapter 2 in verse 20 through chapter 3 in verse 3. Remember I told you sometimes the chapters are broken up uh, just so that we can find the references. This is a passage that goes right through the end of one chapter into the next. So Colossians chapter 2, verse starting with verse 20, we're going to go through chapter 3. In verse 3, it says, you have died with Christ. Did you die with Christ? You know, when you, when you received him, God saw your old man die. And now you're alive in Christ. And he has set you free 
from the spiritual powers of this world. In other words, you had that as a master, the, the evil wickedness, the sin of your own life. In the, you used, that used to be your master, but not anymore. So why do you keep following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that, de that deteriorate or fall apart as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. But they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Wow. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the reality of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life, and you really and oh, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. So the word wrestle, because we're wrestling against, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. In the Strong's Concordance, it the definition is this: wrestling, a contest between two, in which each endeavors to throw the other, and which is decided when the victor is able to hold his opponent down with his hand upon his neck. The term is transferred to the Christian struggle with the power of evil. Now, the Amplified Bible in chapter 3 of Genesis, chapter 15, we see this already happen, that we're victors because Jesus already did this. Or it was prophetic. Prophesied, prophesied in, in Genesis chapter 3, in verse 15, about this. And it says this in the Amplified Bible. And I will put enmity or open hostility between you and the woman, and between your seed or your offspring, those who follow the devil in its wicked way and are still serving sin and not Jesus. That's all my, I, my commentary I put in there. And her seed, who's her seed? Jesus is her seed. He shall fatally bruise your head, and you shall only bruise his heel. You see, from the beginning in Genesis, God's plan for your wrestling was for Jesus, his seed, to fatally bruise the enemy with his heel. In 1 John chapter in 1 John chapter 3, and verse 8, it says, The reason the Son of God appeared, get this now, was to destroy, not put up with, not compromise with, not capitulate or give in to the devil's works. But the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. You might say, well, that already happened on the cross. But now we're living through the, the provision of God through that victory, right? And so there's things that we wrestle with. And we should know that there a, a spirit, there's a spiritual cause with something that we continue to wrestle with. God's plan for us was not to harm us, but to prosper us so that we would have a future filled with hope. That's what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. So, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Do not fret. Do not worry. Do not trust your own strength. You know, there's times when I, I went to places and people said, you know, can you come and pray for us? Because we feel something in the house. And I go in there and all that. All my hair stands on end, and I get chicken skin, like we say here in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, and I'm there, and and 
and my physical being is saying, run, run, this is scary. But my spirit man is saying, stand, how? In the might of the Lord, not in my own strength. So do not fight this battle with physical weapons. Fight by standing strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You know, just as your salvation does not depend on your works or accomplishments, so this battle does not depend on your feelings, your talents, your, or your abilities, but in Christ or in Jesus. There is no struggling if you are going along with the way of the world and the and the way that evil thinks. But there is a struggle if you are committed to live godly in Christ Jesus. And the world will oppose you all of the way. Right? There's a song out there that says, uh, uh, the hell or the devil lost another one. Something like that. There's a song out there. It says, he's mad because you were serving him. But now you're not. Now you're in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul goes on to say, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons are of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity, that means controlling every thought, to the obedience of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Yes, we are. We all wrestle with something. But this passage confirms that our weapons are not for fighting the seen world, but the unseen. Not the physical world, but the spiritual world. Like imaginations, high thoughts, or here in Hawaii we call them High maka maka thoughts. Or that translated pride filled thoughts. You know, having imagination and high thoughts in themselves is not evil, but when they exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, they are just that evil, wicked, and no good. So take some time to look at what you are wrestling with. And ask God to show you what to do and how to pray against it so that you can cast them down and stop them in their tracks. Someone once said, what you permit, you promote. What you allow, you encourage. What you condone, you own. What you tolerate, you deserve. You know, let me just add my own thoughts here. What you let into your life, you are responsible to get out of your life. Have you spent hours watching stuff that you shouldn't or listening to stuff you shouldn't? There's a, there's a kid song that says, Be careful little eyes what you see and be careful little ears what you hear. For the Father up above is watching, is looking down in love. Be careful, little, let me put this, heart, what you're letting into it. Okay? We can pray until we are blue in the face for something we let into our minds or our heart. We can pray for that to leave. But until we evict them, they're going to stay put. Like, let's say you looked at some porn, right, in, in your past life. And once in a while, boom, those pictures come up. Why? Because they're filed back there. When those pictures come up, hey, time for you to leave. Get out in the name of Jesus. And, and just the same way you let it in, it has to go. You know what? I've tried this, and it works. Some of my thoughts towards certain things. No, I refuse to think like that anymore. You got to go. I am renewing my mind. You know, Psalms, uh, what psalm is that? That says, 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Right now I can't think of the address. I'll put it in the message here. So let me ask you again. Are you wrestling with something? Maybe a habit that you just can't overcome. Man, you keep wrestling with that. You know, man, I'm smoking and I can't figure out why I can't stop. Even though I call the quit line and even though I get nicotine patches or gum or whatever i can't stop why because those are they're just attempting to help you with the symptoms when there is a deeper meaning and it has to do with the spirit you know bitterness is unseen hate is unseen jealousy is unseen unforgiveness is unseen anger that's suppressed is unseen you might say anger is suppressed yeah, you ever heard of somebody that, that all of a sudden they just blow up and they just go crazy? It's because they've been suppressing this, like holding down this pressure and all of a sudden, like a nuclear bomb, it comes out. And they finally express themselves. And most times with anger, it's not a, it's not a good thing. But it's good that they release it, but maybe the way they express themselves is not good. You know, lust can't be seen. But what you need to know is each one of these and many more will take its toll on you physically if you don't take care of it. I said this before, and I don't, I, I don't know where it came from. I hear it from all different angles. But, you know, unforgiveness. Let's just take unforgiveness, for example. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison. You drinking poison and expecting the guy that you're not forgiving to die. Drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. So, what does having physical ailments have to do with this? It has a lot to do. I was reading an article, and I'll put a link and uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in there. If you're getting this by email, I'll put the link in there also. Is that um, they, they just, they found out that uh, rheumatoid arthritis, when they surveyed the people that have really bad arthritis, they found out that there's some, some unforce, unseen cause. And sometimes it's bitterness and it's unforgiveness and it's some other emotion wow <laughs> man we need to take some inventory because i don't know about you but today a lot of people are getting sick and then they die man i want to be like the guys in the old testament that that god says oh your time's up and they say okay they bring their family together okay it's time for me to go okay and they bless them and then boom, they're gone <laughs> we don't have to get old sick and die we don't god has a plan for us and his plan for us is not to go out early but to accomplish his will and then like the apostle paul said hey i've i'm done with the race my departure is near then we can know we fulfill the will of god so i'm going to put a link in there about from the national institute of health and how it how it um how it affects people's health the way that they think. You know, it seems that the world is finally finding out what God always knew. That it's not good to have those pent up emotions. This is why we must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things we need will be added. That's Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. So Jesus also said of the last days, don't let anyone mislead you. The King James says, take heed that no one deceives you. That's in Matthew chapter 24. In verse 4, I believe it is. It says, when it comes to spiritual warfare or wrestling, the statement, don't worry, be happy, is not going to help you because you cannot be happy if something is eating away at you from the inside out. 
So take inventory of your emotions and feelings to see if you are wrestling with any one of these. They may be the cause of your physical or even the National Institute of Health says, even mental health problems. So if you do not wrestle with any of these things, praise God. But if you do, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Commit yourself anew, afresh to God and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for my friends. Thank you for helping me. Lord, you know the, the path that I'm on and where I've come from and where I am going. And you are continuously trying to help us to overcome, like, like uh, the Apostle Paul said, that the end, that the, or like John said in John chapter 1 and verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 8, is that the reason why Jesus came is to destroy the work of the enemy. So that when he comes in, like a flood, you will raise up a standard against him. What is that standard? Your word, that we have hid in our heart, that we might not sin against you. Lord, we're struggling. We're wrestling with something. Show us what that is so we can forgive, so we can evict jealousy and anger and rage and malice and all of those things that are not good for us out of our lives. And first of all, that you would be glorified and then we can help someone else overcome it also. Help us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whoo! Yep. If you're wrestling, it's a spiritual wrestle that you're with. Ask the Lord to help you be strong in Him. All right. Hi, Mom and Brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha.